Now this momentum factor will require some data. It will be composed of obviously Darwin assets, so we'll need to construct a universe of assets. We'll need quotes for each asset. These will enable us to calculate returns. The factors we'll need for this particular trading strategy, this dummy hypothesis that involves this momentum factor that's considering end of period returns as predictive of future period returns, we're going to need to construct past returns and future returns time series. So those are the two sub factors that we'll construct using quotes acquired from the Darwin API. We'll also then uh, calculate projected returns of a long-only Darwin portfolio based on all of the above. In order to do so, if you've been following along uh, the Darwin API videos recently, you'll know that we'll need to use the Darwin Info API that allows us to get both symbols and quotes for the, our Darwins of interest. In this case, we want to construct a universe of all available Darwins that have status active and deleted. And deleted is important because we can't just take active Darwins as that will essentially allow us to mitigate any Darwins that failed along the way and hence introduce bias into our backtesting. So we have to call the API for both active and deleted Darwin symbols and then download the histories for those accordingly. Given that that will take a significant amount of time, we've already done that for you prior to recording this tutorial. So we have a file that has downloaded all this data uh, for Darwins that are of active uh, and deleted status or deleted status up until the 12th of June, 2019. And this data is located for you in a pickle archive inside the data directory on GitHub where this IPython notebook resides as well. Now you must observe when doing this yourself, you'll need to observe API limits. So make sure you've consulted the API documentation for the most recent, most up-to-date API limits as those can um, affect how your download goes and any breakages that you may need to deal with if you've exhausted your API consumption limits for the period in question. And uh, that's essentially it. And once we have the data, just to recap really quickly, our hypothesis is that we're generating a momentum factor that targets that that looks at end of period returns as possibly predictive of future period returns, the direction of future period returns. It then calculates various periods over these returns using past and future returns that we need to calculate using quote data for our Dar from our Darwin universe. It then calculates projected returns for a long only Darwin portfolio and goes ahead and processes it. For this, we've written code to accomplish this. The code here loads the data from the pickle archive that I mentioned recently. When implementing this via API, you would substitute your code here with Darwin Info API specific code. Specifically, the function you would need is get historical quotes that it has been covered in previous tutorials in the Darwin API series. We also construct a graphic helpers object as we'll be plotting a lot of things. And since this is an IPI, uh, since this is a Jupyter notebook, we'll be setting init notebook mode to true for any plotly functionality that we intend on using heavily towards the rest of this tutorial. Also, we are going to, for this tutorial, exclude any data that uh, has a day of week value of less than five. Essentially, we will keep only data that's Monday to Friday and exclude anything else. We will also load for evaluation purposes later, a series of FX market volatility data. And I'll explain why we're going to use this for evaluation later as since we're generating a momentum factor from domain knowledge, we can also hypothesize that momentum is most likely correlated to movement of the market in some way. Hence, correlation to volatility is something that may affect our returns. And that is something we're going to both try and observe and then evaluate numerically as to the validity of that uh, theory, that that uh, statement. Uh, then we go ahead and plot uh, a few things to do with our data set, just so we know how many Darwins there are, what symbols they have. And we're going to use a test Darwin to do some plotting. Obviously, plotting 5,331 Darwins on the single chart would be fairly cumbersome in terms of the space it would all take. It wouldn't look very intuitive and be difficult to navigate. So for any any uh, implementations here that involve plotting a series for demonstration purposes, we've chosen a test Darwin, LVS 4.20 being the ticker of this Darwin, and we're going to plot it along the way to demonstrate not only the plotting functionality that you can use that is available to you in the DWX Graphics Helpers class uh, on GitHub, but also to demonstrate what this looks like when using Plotly in uh, notebook mode. So here we are with our first um, plot where we've very simply plotted the quote series obtained via the API and loaded from the pickle archive into our environment. 
and then uh, done a tail on the data frame to show the last five quotes that are present in this particular data set. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, coworkers, and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.